Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another learning video. Do you know that couple of months back, US FDA has issued Form 483 to Novel Laboratories, which is subsidiary of the Lupin Limited. I guess those who are working in Lupin, they might be aware of this. Well, friends, New Jersey facility of the Novel Laboratories was inspected by US FDA in the month of March, from 7th of March to 30th of March, 2022. It was almost 10 days audit and there were three auditors who conducted the audit and their names were Koyumin, Sandra A. Boyd and A.M. Gibado. So guys, these three auditors has given 13 number of observations and these 13 observations were given in the three main areas, quality system, facility and equipment system and laboratory control system. Under quality system, four observations were given. Under facility and equipment system, five observations were given. And under laboratory control system, four observations were given. Out of these 13 observations, five observations were repeat observations. Well, friends, this is the highest number of observations which I am going to explain in this video. So far, I have made a video on Sun Pharma where 10 observations were given by the US FDA for the Halol facility in May 2022. Before we begin, let me tell you a few facts about the Novel Laboratories. So guys, Novel Laboratories is a subsidiary of Lupin Limited. Novel Laboratories was acquired by Lupin in the year 2015. And last year, US FDA has issued warning letter to Novel Laboratories. So guys, these were the few facts about the Novel Laboratories. Now let us go through the details of all observations one by one. Observation number one. This observation has been categorized as a repeat observation. There was a failure to thoroughly review any unexplained discrepancy. Auditors has quoted five examples under observation number one. Let us understand few of them. Under this observation, Auditors found that OOS was logged for the assay test of stability sample and FAR was submitted on 12th of November 2021. On 17th of December 2021, OS results were confirmed with no root cause. But still, firm has neither recalled or rejected the batch and phase 2 investigation was still going on. One more example quoted by the auditors under observation number 1. Let us see what was that. So guys, during the audit, auditors found that there was no investigation done for the presence of gram-negative bacteria Ralstonia picketi during one of the microanalysis. Along with this, auditors also found that during swab sample analysis, extraneous peak was observed for which firm has not done any investigation to identify the source of extraneous peak. And moreover, no scientific justification was provided for not investigating the extraneous peak. Observation number two, the responsibilities and the procedures applicable to quality control unit were not in writing and fully followed. Under this observation, auditor has quoted seven examples. Let us understand few of them. So guys, auditors found that there was no procedure for issuance and reconciliation of the documents. Along with this, auditors found deficiencies in the change control handling related practices. Auditors observed that proposed changes were not having sufficient details about the change and effectiveness checks of change controls were not performed. Guys, if you remember in the beginning of the video, I told you that Novel Laboratories, which is the subsidiary of Lupin, was issued warning letter last year. And in response to one of the observations, Lupin was committed to perform 100% cleaning verification of non dedicated equipments. But auditors observed that Lupin has implemented this change without raising any deviation or change control. Or we can say that the change was implemented without any documentation. Through verbal communication, they have started cleaning verification of non-dedicated equipments. Observation number three. Procedures describing the handling of all written and oral complaints regarding the drug products were not written and followed. Under this observation, auditors found that there were number of market complaints received related to short over water count. But firm has stated in the market complaint closure report that uh, market complaints for the one or two shot or over count of tablets per bottle is considered as minor and no further actions or investigation is required. Observation number four. Employees engaged in the manufacturing, processing and packing of the drug products lack the training required to perform their assigned functions. Under this observation, auditors found that there were so many operators for them on job training records were not available with the QA department and all those operators were executing the GMP operations. 
This discrepancy was found with those operators who joined the organization before January 2022. And observation number four has been categorized as a repeat observation. Observation number five, procedures for the cleaning and the maintenance of the equipments were deficient regarding the sufficient details of the methods, equipments and the materials used in the cleaning. Under this observation, auditors found that operators do not document some of the key activities which are related to cleaning. For example, when auditors reviewed the cleaning documents, they found that there was no cleaning start time, cleaning end time, amount of the water used for the cleaning, amount of the cleaning solution used and number of jets used during the cleaning of the manufacturing equipments. So because of these deficiencies in the cleaning documents, auditors stated that there is no assurance that the cleaning is performed as per the firm's approved procedure. In addition to this, auditors requested firm to provide the analytical method validation document from year 2007, but firm was not able to provide the document. Observation number six, written procedures were not established and followed for the cleaning and maintenance of the equipments, including utensils used in the manufacturing, processing, packing or holding of the drug products. Under this observation, auditors found that swab sampling locations for various equipments were not evaluated using risk based approach. Or to put it in a simple language, I will say that hard to clean parts of the equipments were not selected for the swab sample collection during the cleaning validation studies. And the observation number six has been categorized as a repeat observation. Observation number seven, equipments used in the manufacturing, processing, packing and holding of the drug products were not of appropriate design to facilitate operations for its intended use. Under this observation, auditors found that 100% checkware machine was not qualified properly. Actually, auditors found that machine speed was not verified during the qualification and speed test was not the part of the calibration schedule. Along with this, auditors during the facility round found that date and time of some of the equipments displayed on the HMI was not matching with the actual date and time. Later on, date and time was reset through work order, but the impact due to mismatch of the date and time was not evaluated. Observation number 8. Input and output computer records were not checked for their accuracy. Under this observation, auditors has verified the warehouse materials inventory record in SAP versus physically available quantities, and they found that these were not matching. In warehouse, auditors verified the list of the materials to be stored in cold storage versus actually stored material and they found that these were not matching. Along with these two observations, auditors stated that there is no proper procedure for material reconciliation in SAP. Observation number 9. This observation has been categorized as a repeat observation. Appropriate controls were not exercised over computers or related systems to assure that the changes in the master production and control records or other records are instituted by the authorized personnel. Under this observation, auditors found that single common login ID was used for tablet tester. One more deficiency auditors found in one of the SOP which is titled as GXP Computerized and Automated Systems User Access Management. As per this SOP, IT department is supposed to give access to users. Now what happened during the manufacturing area round, auditors verified the IT documents of granting access to users but they didn't get any details of granting user access for few operators. So these were the reasons because of which auditors stated that appropriate controls were not exercised over computers or related systems. Observation number 10. Routine calibration, inspection and checking of the equipment was not performed according to a written program designed to assure proper performance. Under this observation, auditors found that periodic temperature mapping was not done for the stability chambers and there was no procedure to describe that how and when to perform temperature mapping. According to company management, temperature mapping is only performed during the qualification. For example, CRT chambers were last qualified in 2014 and 2015. Observation number 11. This observation is a repeated observation. So laboratory controls do not include the establishment of scientifically sound and appropriate specifications, 
standards and the test procedures to assure that components conform to appropriate standards of identity. Under this observation, auditors found that SOP on chromatographic data integration was deficient. That is, there was no procedure explained in the SOP that how to integrate chromatographic data. In addition to this, auditors found that for assay test, only one preparation is being done with the single injection. Along with this, auditors found that action limits derived in the microbiology were not based on the historical data. Auditors also stated that you do not check and identify the microflora of your facility. Only when there is alert limit achieved, then only microflora is identified. Observation number 12. Laboratory records do not include completely derived data from all tests to assure the compliance with the established specifications and standards. Under this observation, auditors found that electronic data reconciliations were not performed for the chromatographic data and for the FTIR data. And moreover, there was no procedure for reconciliation of the electronic data. In addition to this, auditors also found that there was no procedure for naming of the files in FTIR. On 7th of March 2022, during the review of electronic data in FTIR, auditors observed unconventional five names were given for the FTIR data. Along with this, auditors also found that electronic data was not reviewed for standalone equipments, for example, osmometer, density meter, and viscometer. Data review was performed using printer data. Observation number 13. The written stability program for the drug products does not include reliable, meaningful, and specific test methods. So let us see why auditors stated like this. So guys, on 9th of March and 16th of March 2022, auditors visited the stability chambers area and upon verification of the stability chambers, auditors observed that samples inside the stability chambers were not kept properly so as to ensure the proper air flow in the stability chambers. Along with that, auditors checked the method validation for assay and related compound tests and found that mass balance was not determined or evaluated. So that is the reason because of which auditors further stated that there was no assurance that method used during the stability studies were able to detect all the potential impurities as mass balance was not evaluated during the analytical method validation. And this observation applies to all the commercial products manufactured at the Lupin. So guys, these were the 13 observations which were issued by USFDA to Lupin, New Jersey plant in USA. There are so many examples quoted by the auditors in Form 483 against each observation. And I have covered few of them. If you want more details about these observations, then you can find the link given in the description or you can visit the USFDA website to download the Form 483. And if in case you don't know how to download Form 483 from USFDA website, then you can check the link given in the description and you can learn it. So this is it for today, guys. Hope you have learned something new today. Bye-bye and happy learning.